everybody, Artie Tack here, and today I am going to be painting Haku for an upcoming show at Battle and Brew in Atlanta, Georgia. It's a Studio Ghibli tribute show. I should probably look up the date for that, but I don't have it in front of me because I'm an idiot. But I'll post I'll post a link to it in the comments below. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and say I have no idea what I'm doing. 95% uh, of this painting is me just uh, wildly going, going at it, being like, you know, I hope this works. And I think it kind of does, hopefully. Maybe you'll agree. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so while I'm painting, I'm going to talk about what it was like in the early 2000s being a weeb. Because guess what? Spoiler alert. I was a total fucking weeb in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, I'm an ex-weeb, I, I like to say. You know, I still like, I still, I still kind of like some stuff, you know, I still go hard for Studio Ghibli movies, uh, and you know, I read uh, Junji Ito mangas and stuff like that, but for the most part I don't really watch anime anymore, I don't consume it like I did when I was like, say, 15, 16 years old, but you know, but back then, way back in the good old days, it was amazing. I loved it. Uh, it. It wasn't as available as it is now. Um, I think the first anime I remember seeing was Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland when I was a kid. I think that was one of my first ones. Um, but I do remember falling head over heels in love with it when I was maybe like 13 or 14 when I think Toonami came out on Cartoon Network and of course you know Sailor Moon I saw that and it's just like my life fucking changed and oh my god my friends and I just tried to consume as much as we could and we would rush home from school every day and we would watch it I remember it was like they would show uh Oh my god, Dragon Ball Z, which I never could get into because every time I would watch it, it was just them screaming for like 20 minutes straight, charging up to do something. And I, I you know, I don't have, I don't, fuck, I don't fucking time for that. You know, give me some magical girl shit. So yeah, I'd sit with my friends and support them while they watched Dragon Ball Z. And then motherfucking Sailor Moon came on. And that was my time. And oh my god, it was so good! Uh, you, you know, like everyone's a Sailor Moon fan. It, like, if you're not, then you go fuck yourself. <laughs> but yeah, so that that was basically it. Um, it was really hard to find like videos of it. I think it was still in the time of VHS. DVDs weren't really a thing at this time. Like, it seems so long ago, but it was just like, wow, that was really like, the early. 2000s but wait that was like 20 years ago oh my god oh my god oh god I hate myself so much but yeah so we would go um there was one store in the mall it was like I think it was Tower Records I can't quite remember it was one of those places because like it was back when CDs were still a thing and the place was mostly CDs but they had a little section of like tapes that you could buy of movies and stuff and they had the tiniest little anime section ever and my best friend Michelle and I would go and we would pick out like one each a week because that was all we could afford because we were you know we're like 14 maybe 15 years old so they would they would put out like one or two new ones anyway so there was maybe like 20 total and they had stuff like Ghost in the Shell and um, the, like Vampire Hunter D, and of course like the old classic ones. Uh, what's another one? Ninja Scroll was another one. And we would just buy them and like watch them over and over and over. And oh my God, oh, 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 X 1999. That was one of my favorites. And I remember I finally got the manga and I hated the manga. <laughs> but so that was how we would get our videos. And then there was a bookstore that was right across the way in the mall. And by the way, this was Wolf Chase Mall in Memphis, which that w it was right when the mall opened and it was all sparkly and shiny and beautiful. And I heard now it's kind of like crappy and dingy, <laughs> but you know, it was amazing in the early 2000s. And 
Yeah, there's a bookstore across the hall, and there was this nerdy guy that worked there that was um, in charge of buying the mangas. And this was back when when mangas first came out. They were <laughs> uh, they first printed them American style, like they would actually reverse the artwork and do it that way, which. It actually made it really hard to understand. I remember my one of my first ones I ever bought was called Island, and I loved it. And it was about this demon hunter and this rich woman, and the demons were trying to kill her, and so she was paying this demon hunter to basically protect her from the demons. And I loved it. But I remember like a lot of the panels, I had a hard time understanding what was going on. And come to find out, it was because they had flipped the artwork, so it would read front to back, you know, like the American way of doing stuff. And they, they like stopped doing that shortly after, but you know, but the, the first mangas that I actually still have a bunch of them were printed like that. Um, I had, um, I got all of the Cardcaptor Sakura, uh, mangas, let me see, what's another one? Pet Shop of Horrors. I was obsessed with Pet Shop of Horrors. And I was also an idiot and thought that it came out before um, Gremlins because they had a Gremlins reference. And I was like, oh my god, Gremlins is was created by the Pet Shop of Horror people? Like, cause this is how stupid I was, guys. I was fucking stupid. So, <laughs> so that was basically how we consumed our anime, like, when we were all young children in the late 90s. And uh, there was this guy we went to school with, and oh my god, I had the biggest crush on him. I can't remember his name now, because, you know, it, this was like 20 years ago. And um, he, he, he had a twin, too, and his twin was like the exact opposite of him, which was hilarious. His twin was like this redneck, and then he was this like sexy, hot, anime-obsessed, kind of androgynous guy who wore chinko jeans and like ripped up fishnets on his arms. Ooh, he was sexy. Um, yeah, he had found ta like recordings and stuff of the live action Sailor Moon uh, sh like floor sh theater play. I don't know what it was called. Play. There we go. That's the, <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> um, and it was not translated at all. There were no subtitles. And uh, my friend Nicole borrowed it from him because she wasn't too chicken shit to talk to this guy and ask him if she could borrow it. And we watched it and I became even more hardcore obsessed with Sailor Moon. <laughs> this was the one that had um, like these Sailor Scouts that were, they had extra ones, they had like animal ones. And I can't remember most of them. I remember there was a cute frog one and stuff like that. And I had no clue what was going on, but I was just, you know, I was happy to be there. So, <laughs> so that was most of it and let me tell you it influenced my art so hard and it influences it to this day I think it's like fairly obvious when you look at my stuff that it's like the same kind of style of, of, of shit like the anime is kind of like a really big influence still and I would draw it all the time I was really bad at it but you know whatever I still I still loved it and Everyone at school thought we were, like, the biggest fucking dweebs ever. Like, now I think it's a bit more socially acceptable to be into anime. Like, I've seen big celebrities come out and endorse it and stuff like that. But, like, you can't... That, that shit wasn't happening back when I was a teenager. So it was just like, oh, you're watching cartoons and you're obsessed with these cartoons. Okay, you fucking idiot. And... Ugh. Just, if only they knew what they were missing out on, you know? They were missing out on the best shit ever. So, <laughs> so yeah, there was no anime clubs. There was maybe like 10 of us in my entire high school class that even knew what the fuck it was. I'm sure there were like a couple more like underground people that in my school like closeted anime fans that didn't want to associate with us because like the majority of us that were huge weebs in high school were like the art students and you know a couple of like the theater kids too but it was mostly us art kids and we were god we were so uh actually when i look back now we were kind of iconic <laughs> 
But at the time, it was not, we weren't the kind of people that were popular by any means. So anything that people could do to distance themselves from us, they would do. But uh, yeah, so that was my high school experience with it. We were just kind of considered total fucking dorks. But uh, I remember this anime store opened up in Memphis called Animax. And I was obsessed with it. It was teeny, 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 tiny. And it was like a 30 minute drive from my house to get there. And when it first opened, I didn't have a license. And so Michelle would have to drive us up there and it would be like a big ordeal because we were driving like downtown. And it wasn't even downtown when I think of it. It's just like to Midtown, but we were, you know, we grew up in the suburbs. So anything outside of suburbia was just like, ooh, this is scary. So we would drive all the way down there and go to this tiny store and spend all of our fucking money on everything in there. Uh, I remember that's where I first was exposed to hentai, because uh, they, <laughs> they had a hentai section. Uh, one of my high school friends, I remember he um, rented La Blue Girl, uh, and we had a, a watch party. That was fun. <laughs> um, bondage Fairies, that was another one. Um, but yeah, I, I fucking love that place. We would go basically uh, once a week and go and buy like art books and stuff like that. I still have a bunch of them. Uh, I, my favorite one was Angel Sanctuary. Um, I still have that one somewhere in a box. But God, it was so pretty. Um, so yeah, that was that was <laughs> Animax. When I first got my license, that was the first place I drove to. <laughs> oh my God, it was such a fucking dweeb. So yeah, that that was that. Um, oh, 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 and and uh, they released Princess Mononoke in theaters, and my mom took me to see it, and it was fucking awesome. Oh my god, it was so rad. Um, my whole family went to go see it, and that was I think that was my first Studio Ghibli movie, and. Um, that kind of opened the door for me just falling madly in love with Miyazaki and all of his artwork. And after that, I had to, I had to have everything. And a couple years after that, um, there was a tour that came through uh, Memphis that brought the cat bus to the Children's Museum. And so I fucking went. And since I was a teenager, I guess they let me in. I think now, like, a lot of the children's museums are iffy of an adult going by themselves. But at the time, I was maybe 17. And I went by myself to the children's museum to see the cat bus. And I had a digital camera that you had to record on floppy disks. And it, it was so fucking huge and massive. And I set it up with a timer and ran and got a photo on the cat bus. And I wish I could find this photo. I have no idea where the hell. It probably just got deleted years ago. Um, but there was no, there was nobody there. It was just me running around on this adult life-size cat bus. <laughs> I think the same one is actually in the Studio Ghibli Museum in Japan to this day, which is super rad. It looks the exact same as the one that I got to see, which was rad. But yeah, uh, Ghibli, G Jesus Christ, like that one, wh the, that dude's art, that whole studio, I should say, their art is just absolutely insane. Everything they put out is crazy. Um, Spirited Away is my favorite, hands down. Um, and then Princess Mononoke is my second favorite. I mean, those are two of the most popular ones, but they're popular for a reason. Spirited Away, I think, is just an absolute masterpiece of a movie. But yeah, so that's basically my experience of being an anime nerd back in like the late 90s, early 2000s. And God, it, I really, really wish that I had the resources then that I do now, you know, now that I don't even watch anime, I don't consume it or anything, but we... <sighs> It influenced me so much as a kid. Like, it still influences my fashion, like Japanese fashion stuff. Like, I still incorporate it into my style today. I can't escape that. I don't think I ever will. Um, but yeah, I don't know what happened to make me kind of fall out of love with it. I guess it doesn't have the same... It's, it's familiar now. You know, back then it wasn't familiar. It was brand new. It was exciting. And now it's just like a, there's too much. It's oversaturated. And 
you know, that's not saying that they should they should stop making it. That, I mean, I just think that's why I myself don't really watch it anymore. Like every once in a while, I'll find one that I really love. Like I really love, um, was it Little Witch Academia? The artwork in that is insane. But but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> that was me rambling for like 15 minutes on on being an anime nerd in the when I was a kid. <laughs> But uh, yeah, th <laughs> thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed me painting, and uh, I hope you could not tell that the whole time I was painting, I was like frantically freaking out and like trying not to to act like I was messing up left and right because I was. But <laughs> but yeah, uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like the video, subscribe. Uh, hopefully, I'll be uploading more. I'm kind of slow to do these because. It's editing is hard <laughs> but uh thanks for watching guys uh see you next time